Hello. Um, what I'd like to do today is to uh, connect a process that uh, many of us learn um, in Algebra, Algebra 2, called completing the square. I want to connect the process to uh, a little bit deeper understanding, so maybe you can make some sense of the process by understanding what it means and where it comes from. So, first of all, to review the traditional process, what you need to do is, first of all, in this expression, kick out the 2, because we need it to move out of the way so I can create a number that goes right here that's going to create a perfect square. So right here, when I have uh, 6, the coefficient on b, or on x I mean, divide it by 2, and then square it, I get 9. 9 is the magic number, so I put add that number. In order to maintain balance in the force, I subtract the 9. Now that's basically... Uh, the purpose for doing that is so that I can take x squared plus 6x plus 9. I made that to be a perfect square. If I were to factor it, factor by grouping, uh, we would eventually get to the point where we had x plus 3 squared. And then, of course, we got to bring down the 2 minus 9, which is negative 7. So I've just turned a function in standard form into a function in vertex form. Of course, to check our work, we would square x plus 3. <coughs> Remember, we do first and then the outside. In other words, we distribute the x, x times x, x times 3, gives us x squared plus 3x. And then we have 3 plus x gives us 3x, and 3 times 3, I said plus before, equals 9. And then we subtract the 7, and in the end we're back where we started because we collect like terms here, <coughs> and that's completing the square. Most people can follow these steps and end up with the right answers most of the time, but I thought it worthwhile to, again, get some perspective. Now, some of you in some of your algebra classes in the past may have been tortured by algebra tiles. Um, if you have, uh, I apologize for the trauma that they may have caused you, uh, but bear with me. You might be able to um, appreciate them after this. Let's see. Uh, first of all, I have uh, this tile, which represents square, obviously, but we are going to use it to represent an arbitrary length x times another arbitrary length x. Now these are the same letter, so they're representing the same arbitrary length. So x is an abstract idea, it's an unknown number. We're trying to make the abstract more concrete by putting it in a geometric form. So this particular shape is what we're going to refer to as x squared, because the area of this shape is x squared square units. That's a lesson for another geometry class. Nonetheless, I also could take a different shape. It's going to be the same length x as this length x here, and that's going to be one unit, an arbitrary unit. It could be a centimeter if you're global-minded, an inch if you're an American. Uh, either way, this is one x square units, or just x, because one times x is x. And the last shape I'll introduce to you is the unit square. It's one unit by one unit. It is the same unit as this unit here, which represents, of course, one square unit. Now, you can do algebra without having to use these tiles. You can use all sorts of different representations for algebra. For example, uh, this image right here shows an arbitrary length x, and then three single units, which, of course, then this is the algebraic expression x plus 3 in pictorial form. That same value x here is represented twice, and then there's an extra one unit here, so this is obviously 2x plus 1. So in algebra, we could, for example, take x plus 3 plus 2x plus 1, which would be represented as putting all of the sticks in one line. <clears throat> in so doing, we recognize that we could pick up this one stick here and move it up to the top, and essentially rearrange and get x plus 2x plus 3 plus 1, and that's why we collect like terms. There's the x kind of numbers, we have three of those, and then there's four of the single unit one numbers. But when it comes to multiplication, these sticks don't uh, hold up in terms of this sort of representation. So that's why we use algebra tiles. So algebraic expressions, like the ones on the previous page, can be expressed using these two-dimensional shapes instead. Recall the length here is x and the length here is 1, so each of these is an x, so there's three of them, 3x, and 1, 2, 3, 4 units, in other words, 3x plus 4 square units. Here we see an x by x block, so that's an x squared 
plus 2x plus 3 more. So this is that area. Now, the last one's a little tricky. If you look at it carefully, you'll see this x squared has been cut short because I took two units and cut them into. So this would be like a form of subtraction. So the algebra holds up a little bit with subtraction. It kind of falls apart in other ways, but nonetheless, here I'm showing x squared minus 2x. Showing you then that there are some concrete ways of expressing abstract expressions. So what does that have to do with completing the square, you ask? I'm glad you asked. Here is another algebraic expression. I won't insult you, you can see it's a 1x squared and there's 6 x's and 2 more right here. Now let's go through the process of what's called completing the square. First of all, this shape as it is, is rectangular and it's not a square and so I arbitrarily for no reason at all want to complete the square. So as we we're told, first you kick out the 2 because it's not good enough. So I'm going to take this 2, or one of this one here and move it over and this one here, move it over, there, kicked out the two. The next thing we were supposed to do was to take the number, that was the coefficient on x, which was six, cut it in half, so now it's three and three, and then we're supposed to multiply those two together. Well, before I uh, do that here, hold on. I am going to first take the six x here, and I am going to get rid of three of them. That's the cutting six in half, or dividing six by two. So that gives me one of the threes here. So six x is now represented by three x. And you ask what happened to the other three x? <clears throat> well, I'm gonna stack them over here on the top. So I still have x squared plus three x plus three x and then there's the plus two hiding over here. So it's the same expression as it was before, but now you can see I'm starting to form a square. If I wanna complete this square, then I would have to basically figure out how many of these little singular units, square units, would go into this square. You can try to fill it in and count, or you could say, hey, there's three this way and three that way, three rows of three for a total of nine, and you'd be right. And of course, look, that's also what happens when you take the 3 times 3 in the X box and get the 9 up here. We're going to add the 9 right there. Now look what I've done. By adding 9, I've completed the square. But of course, we have to be fair and balanced, like all news sources, and we have to subtract the 9 that we added over here. So I had the 2 that I kicked out before, I added the 9, then I have to subtract the 9, and that gives me perfect square. In other words, the perfect square itself is x plus 3 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. By adding 9, I created a perfect square, x plus 3 squared. That's what this is. And of course, the 2 minus 9 comes down to be minus 7. And I don't know how to represent that except to take two of these blue ones and cut out two of these blue ones, and so you'd have the 7 there. But my graphics are limited, sorry. Not sorry. Let's go back and revisit this square once. I just want to show you something about the process of foiling. This might look an awful lot like that grid method that some of you might have learned uh, when you're supposed to foil things. You have the x and the 3. Or let's move it back. You're going to have the x here and the 3 here. And then we're supposed to have the x here no, and the th uh, x here and the 3 here. That's what it was. And that gives you x squared, and then there's a 3x, and a 3x, and a 9. And look, those are the exact same situations we have here. x squared, a 3x, a 3x, and a 9. So this method here is consistent with the square method that we have over here. Nonetheless, I wanted to show you when you foil this, the first thing you do is you multiply the x times the x. It gives you the x squared, and here's your x squared. You multiply the x times the 3, you get 3x. Here's a 3x right here. We're going to take the 3 times the x, and you get another 3x. It's counted for up top. And we've got the 3 times 3 gives us 9, and that's right here. So x plus 3 squared is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. Same fact. Sorry, I didn't mean to take that away. x squared plus 6x plus 9. So, in summary... We have the expression x squared plus 6x plus 2 represented by this unsightly non-geometric shape. 
And then I completed the square, and in the process, I had a perfect square, which gave me x plus 3 squared, and then I had the leftovers, which became minus 7. So essentially, you can see now why they call it completing the square, and it also explains why, during the process of completing the square, I take the b value, divide it by 2, and then square it. It's creating the number that does literally complete the square in this case. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I know this was a long video, but uh, what else you got to do? Thanks. Have a great day.